I just get like nervous when I'm driving. I think because of all the people that I'll kill. <laughs> I feel like everyone's always like, um, relax, it's just driving. I'm like, um, I'm gonna kill you too. Like, <laughs> why don't you care? Yeah. Welcome to the nucleus. Welcome. 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 Welcome to the what nucleus. What up? What up? Welcome, welcome. This is Let's Get to the Nucleus, the podcast. I am your host, Dez O'Neill. We are here at Atlas Islands. I'm here with my boy Ryan, my engineer. Came in all the way from Houston to record episode two. Wow, really? Yes. Came all the way from Houston to do this, man, because this is a special episode. We got a special guest and very special young lady. Very (laughs) funny, talented Sophie Buttle, man. How thank are you? Thank you for having me. I'm so honored. Yes, man. I'm, thank you for coming. Oh my gosh, my pleasure. This is uh, better bring some good stories. Hell I didn't yeah. realize anyone was traveling. Oh yeah, man. We just happy to have you here in the nucleus. And mm-hmm. I just want to welcome you in. So, you are a Canadian comedian, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I heard you started doing comedy when you was 15 years old. Mm-hmm, that's right. Wow. Yeah. Um, my mom and I used to go. There's like a comedy club in town, and we used yeah. to go watch Amateur Night together. Okay. It's just like a mother-daughter date. Damn. Yeah, and we went for like a year and before I started doing it. And, yeah, it was like, I mean, it was kind of weird. So my mom's like an artist, right? I like how you say mom. <laughs> How do I say it? Mom, hold up. You got the, the Canadian accent. You got a little twang how you say mom. I love yeah, it. Yeah. So so her and I would go and we would watch. But the thing is we would also like have martinis because, you know, as there was my, was my mom, like yeah. it, like they, nobody really thought to ID me because it's like, why would she? Yeah. Why would she be cool? And so <laughs> we, like, we were going for so long. That I kind of, I got to know, like, the staff and yeah. stuff at this comedy club. And uh, everyone everyone that worked there is, like, comics, right? Like, yeah. like, at a lot of comedy clubs. And so I kind of got to know the scene before I started. But it was under the assumption that I was old enough to be drinking. Damn. So <laughs> when I started in the scene, um, everyone thought I was, like, 20. But yeah. I was 15. And so for the first year of doing stand-up, I was doing like this fake adult character wow. on stage and I was doing like sex jokes and I was like not <laughs> having sex. So it was like, it was so bad. It was so like, I look, I think back and it's like so cringe cause like I didn't know anything. Damn. So how, how was you coming up with the material? What your mom was just giving you material? Or something? No, I was just doing bad material. It didn't make sense. <laughs> Damn. So you, you always wanted to get on stage as a kid or your mom just... Mm-hmm. Kind of yeah. well, pushed I, you on stage. I have been doing some some acting and some writing. Like I've always liked to to be creative. Okay. But acting was never really for me, and writing was like, you know, I'm too dumb to be a writer. So <laughs> if I'm stand up, I'm like this is perfect. Yeah. Okay. So 15 years old. So when did you realize like, okay, I want to do stand up now? Honestly, like the first time I did a set, I was like, you probably had the same thing too. Like the first time we did a set, I was just like. Well, I'm, I'll, I'm just going to do this for my whole life. <laughs> Damn. So mm-hmm. your first time, it was just a home run. Yeah. The thing is, it's like I did my first set at this club called Absolute Comedy in Ottawa. And it's like a famously easy club to do well at. Like, yeah. like festivals in Canada don't accept tapes from Absolute Comedy because everybody crushes there. <laughs> so it's not an accurate read of material. And wow. So I did my first ever set there and I was like, oh, I'm a killer. I'm the best that's ever lived. Like crushing I'm walking my first air. set. Shit. Yeah. God yeah, damn. doing this material that doesn't make sense about sex. I'm like, you guys, you guys know about sex? This is crazy, right? I'm wow. saying that. And... Yeah, so I mean, I just I did that. I was like, well, I'm great at this, so I'll do it. I'll just keep doing it. And, you know, when you're a teenager, everyone's proud of you for just doing anything. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter if you're good or not. Wow. So, had a lot of positive reinforcement. Um, but the, the thing was sort of, the thing that was weird was because all the comics thought I was older, and this was 12 years ago, too. Damn. Like, people were making moves and everything on me. <laughs> 
And then so like a year in, when everyone found out how old I was, like everyone was yeah. so mad at me because they're embarrassed. Yeah. And like I still can't get a follow back from some of these people. <laughs> <laughs> they unfollowed your ass for that. Unfollowed for life. Like Damn. still still like have trouble performing in Ottawa. <laughs> wow. Okay, so you um you when did you leave Canada? Um well I got my work papers in like October of this year. So like in November I came down. Oh, so you just now yeah, and I even I came down in November and I did my late night set, and then yeah. I went back to Canada for the holidays for like Christmas, and I had some shows. So I've only really been back here for a month. Damn. Mm-hmm. So how was the uh, the late night set? It was really it, cool. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I booked it like kind of right before the pandemic started. Okay. Under the assumption that I was about to get my work papers, and then. Uh, you know, my immigration lawyer didn't, we didn't want to pull the trigger like during COVID because yeah. stuff was really backed up. Stuff was like still backed up from Trump not wanting people coming into the country. So Damn. there was like a huge lineup of of people trying to get work visas and stuff during the pandemic. And then they just kind of freeze, froze everything because of COVID. Yeah. And then... When stuff finally started opening back up, that's when we decided to apply. But it's really nerve-wracking, and, like, it's really hard for Canadian comics because, like, it's so expensive and it takes so much time to get a work visa that I think a lot of Canadian comics are sort of... I don't know if resentful is the right word, but just, like, just jealous of Americans because it's, like, if you're born in America and you start doing stand-up and you're seen, once you feel like you're established or you're good... You can just move to LA or New York or Chicago yeah. or whatever. <laughs> but in Canada, you literally have to like get your life savings in order Damn. and get all these letters. Like the letters is the worst part. Letters. You have, you have to get all these letters of basically recommendation for to apply for this visa. Really. And so you're calling in every favor you've ever acquired to get all these like kind of b- bigger American comics and industry people. To write you a letter about how you're exceptional <laughs> and how you're going to add to the American industry. And it's wow. so embarrassing. <laughs> so you're just begging. You're absolutely begging. Kissing begging. ass. Yeah, for favors that like should be cashed in later for like an opening set or something. Yeah. But instead, you're just like, can you write me this letter about how I'm the best comedian you've ever <laughs> seen? <laughs> wow. That's crazy. I didn't know it was that much of a hassle. Just it to, is a hassle. Yeah. It's so hard to get to America. Okay, so you you living in L.A. now? Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, you being around American people and Canadian people, like, what is the difference between Americans and Canadians? Because the closest I've been is to you or yeah, Drake. Well, what, or, do you, what do you notice about Drake and I? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you just seem happier. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I and, mean, that's true. I'm, I'm, like, happy even for a Canadian, though. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> but... I, I noticed that Americans are, like, more blunt. More blunt. Like, sometimes I'll do an American accent at, like, a restaurant or something, and it's just, like, I, I just feel like I'm being kind of rude. <laughs> like, I'll be like, I need sugar. And then, yeah. you know, it's, that's not rude here. So the waitress is just like, yeah, I'll get you sugar. And I'm like, are we fighting? Like, oh, it feels so no. unnatural to me. <laughs> so just asking for something like that just seemed like you being rude. Wait, in Canada, you're like, sorry, I'm so sorry. Like, oh, um, can I have some? If it's no problem, if no, but can I have some sugar, Damn. please? And then they're like, of course. No, I should have thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I need to go to Canada. Shit. It's really like that. It's just, it's almost like the whole country is just like small town people, but we have cities. Okay. But that's like the culture. Damn. That's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, I, I was wondering, you say y'all just super nice, but... You know, do y'all have some sketchy areas? Like, if I was to go to Canada, is there some areas I mm-hmm. need to be like, you know, watching? Yeah. <laughs> you know, holding my shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause- well, yeah, of course. So, so I'm from Vancouver. Okay. And Vancouver is, like, West Coast. It doesn't snow. It's pretty warm all year round. So that's where, like, most of the homeless people in Canada move to, right? Because yeah. it's, like, more comfortable to be sleeping outside in the winter. And... In Vancouver, yeah, the area is called the downtown east side, and it's just, like, blocks and blocks of tent cities. Like, it's, like, it's really bad. Like, I was watching a documentary about 
uh, the opioid crisis just in the world and the yeah. opening it was like an American documentary and the opening scene was the downtown east side of Vancouver yeah so it's really the epicenter of of the opioid crisis so that's like it's it's pretty it's pretty crazy in Vancouver but they have like safe injection sites now mm. which is like um, if you're a drug user you can go there to get like clean needles and I think they actually give you drugs too, just what? to make sure that it's not laced with fentanyl. Damn. Yeah, I think so. The, they giving you drugs. I th- yeah, for free. And I clean, think. And clean needles. They like if you're gonna do the drugs, come here. We'd with rather it. you do it in the house. Yeah, yes. like that. Oh my god, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think the goal is to get people to like wean off of it, and the best way to do that is to give them a little bit of it safely every day. Okay. I'm not, yeah, I'm not totally familiar with the whole strategy for it, but, like, they do that in, like, Sweden and stuff, too, are part of it. Yeah. So, you say Vancouver. When I hear Vancouver, I think about the Vancouver Grizzlies. <gasps> I you have remember? a Grizzlies shirt. Wow, yeah. man. I remember that basketball team. Did really? you ever go to a game? No, I think it's, they, they stopped before I was doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Before you was doing stuff. Not to age you, but... Okay, okay. <laughs> when did you... Do you know when they stopped? I don't. I just remember they had a team out there. It would be so great if that started back up again, because, like, the hockey, hockey team in Vancouver is pretty bad. Vancouver Canucks. We have a really good soccer team, but nobody really cares about soccer. Like, okay. I I would go. We have the White Caps. I'm actually going to go see them in L.A. They're playing the Galaxy next week or something. Okay, so you don't like the Raptors? Toronto Raptors? I do, but it's Toronto. It's not. It's not <laughs> Vancouver. Okay. Basically, every city in Canada has a beef with Toronto. It's Toronto oh, against the world. Oh shit! Mm-hmm. What is up with that? They just think they're the center of the universe. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that. I thought it was cool. She say no. Nah, it's I like Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> I like the like my whole family watches all the Raptors games and like I get messages from them if they do well or if they do bad. So you wasn't happy when they won? Though. No, no, we were happy. It was huge. Uh, it was huge for Canada. I was happy, and I'm not even Canadian. It was cute. It was yeah. like and she no, said it was cute. It was cute. Like <laughs> it was I, adorable. That's, it, it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. Like Canada was so happy. Yeah. We, don't, we don't usually place in sports. Yeah. So it's like really felt like an underdog story, and I really like the coach. I really like Nick Nurse. Oh yeah. I feel like he's got a good head on his shoulders. Drake, it was fun. Yeah, Drake was going nuts. <laughs> like she was, said it was cute with his lint brush. Have you seen him? I, it's it's. I don't think I was at a Raptors game. But he was at some basketball game, and he was, like, on the court. He was right at the front, and he was just, like, he was watching the game. He didn't look away, but he was, like, aggressively lint-brushing his pants. <laughs> <laughs> I got to look that up. There got to be a meme or some it shit. It has to be. Drake is such a nerd. Like, that's the thing. It's, like, he's just, it's, like, every time there's, like, a Canadian that gets big in America, like, like Drake, like Ryan Reynolds, like Seth Rogen. Yeah. In Canada, it's like our most obnoxious Canadians, and then they come here, and it's like the softest American celebrities. Yeah, because Drake is <laughs> soft, soft as hell. <laughs> soft as hell, man. He's in his feelings every day, all the time. Shit, caking. <laughs> but I, uh, I also want to ask you, like, you doing comedy? When did you know you were a headliner? When it was time, like, oh. It's my time now. Well, I had a sort of weird, um, weird path to, to headlining. Like when I was um, when I was first starting, I was like felt very held back yeah. for a long time. I think because I was young and I was a girl, that everyone kind of viewed me as a teenager still because everyone met me as a teenager. Yeah. And so I, I had like the record for the most co-middles, like co-features, like not even co-headline. Like they had me doing. 12 minutes for a weekend on each show like with another 12 minute person for years and years like, they wouldn't even move <laughs> me up to middle for until i was like maybe 22 and then Damn. i was like wanted to record an album and so i had a meeting with the owner of the club and was like hey can i have a weekend like this is kind of is this is crazy like there's yeah. people that have been doing comedy less time than me that are headlining now and they said no. And they, they, <laughs> they basically were like, you can record your album on like a Tuesday if you want. Yeah. You can do a long set. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'll take what I can get. Yeah. And then I left that club because I felt like they were like, they, I, I just felt like they weren't headlining any women, let alone like a younger woman. Yeah. And so I switched to Yuck Yucks, which is like, 
that's the only chain of comedy clubs in Canada. Like, it's like a helium or whatever. Okay. And so I messaged them and was basically like, I'll come over if I can headline. And then they were right away like, yeah, sure. And I was like, I was so annoyed because I could have been practicing. So yeah, so it took me it took me a while to start headlining. And I was a bit annoyed because the only way to get good at headlining is like everything else is like to yeah, practice. to do it. And so I felt like I was starting headlining much later than the other people that started at the same time as me. Like started stand up at the yeah. same time as me. And... I was sort of headlining um, sporadically, like, right before the pandemic started. And then, obviously, I was doing, like, no shows for, like, yeah. two years. Because in Canada, like, shows were not happening at all. Damn. And then, basically, I just started headlining kind of last weekend. I was doing <laughs> Helium Indianapolis. For real, Helium Indianapolis last weekend was my first long set in like probably two and a half years damn and then this was my second one <laughs> so wow. i still feel kind of rusty like just in the way that like you know if someone in the crowd says something i feel like i'm not as sharp as i was before the pandemic yeah. and i feel like i was just a, a bit quicker on my feet and also like i noticed like like when you're doing a long set when you're doing 45 or an hour or whatever you have some filler jokes yeah in there right just to fill out some time that you knew, you know do well but they're not like your favorite jokes yeah, that yeah. you think are to do, you know. Don't kill. They don't. They don't kill. They don't have like a point a lot of yeah. the time. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just filler yeah. jokes. And I was like really hating my filler jokes like last weekend <laughs> and this weekend just because they feel so stale to me. Because yeah. usually filler jokes are like new stuff that you're working on or new stuff that you were working on like a month or two ago and yeah. you forgot about and bring back. And now it's like new stuff that I was working on like years ago that yeah. I didn't care about. And so I just felt like like pulling teeth to yeah. do it. Okay. But it's good because it's like kind of inspired me to write more. And I have a lot of ideas that I, I now have like more energy to work on like so that I can stop doing those other jokes. So how do you uh, go about creating like new material when you write? Um, I'm not sure. Like, I don't, I don't sit down and write. Yeah. It just kind of. S something happened, an idea come to you. Mm -hmm. So how do you, so you just, you have the thought and you just get on stage with it? Yeah, yeah, that's, cause I like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you figure it out on stage. Yeah, I use, the thing is I usually have a punchline and then I figure out how to say it on stage because I think if I write it and then I try to memorize it, it's going to sound maybe not natural or... I'll have trouble memorizing it and I'll get over my feet or something like if I if I have the punchline in mind and then I'm just like when I, when I go on stage I'm I'm gonna say it naturally because I'm just I'm just, just saying it. I'm just yeah. passing the information forward okay. and then I know it's going somewhere in my head so I have more confidence to talk naturally <laughs> okay I also want to ask you because I had this happen to me before like do you hate being called a female comedian like if somebody bring you on stage does that bother you hate you? being called a female comic of course because yeah. <laughs> i'm a dude <laughs> yeah. but i had a uh because sometimes you just say it naturally when you bring it up you know a lady yeah, and we yeah. don't mean nothing by it, but i had a, a female comedian not to just say she got <laughs> on me like don't say just call me a comedian like she was real adamant about mm. that so is that a, a way you feel i'm not sure because like are you watching the kanye documentary oh yeah, yeah, Genius? yeah, yeah. did you already yeah, watch it all yeah. I don't think I finished it. I watched the first two episodes, but yeah. basically, I feel kind of the same way as he did when he was talking. When someone said that uh, he was their favorite rapper producer, and he <laughs> yeah, was kind yeah. of trying to separate himself from producing because, yeah. you know, that's he felt insecure about that, right? Yeah. So I think the the bigger reaction you get if you say that to someone is just going to be based on their insecurity about that, like. If they're if they're in their head thinking they're only getting booked because they want a token female yeah. on the show, they're gonna be offended. But I just like I am a woman and I'm you know comfortable with that and I like being a woman and yeah. it's you know it informs a lot of my comedy and I like to do comedy that women like. Like yeah. for me, it does. I don't I don't really feel offended by it because I don't feel 
like I'm being added to shows as a token or whatever. Because you know that be happening. Yes, of that, course. <laughs> and it pisses a lot of people off. Because I remember me coming up. I used to, I used to be funny, grinding, going to open mics, and I wouldn't be on no shows. I, it was hard for me to get on a paid gig or something. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to get on a flyer. That's all I wanted. Yeah. And it'd be like these girls that just start. And they just already on flyers. They already mm-hmm. getting paid. I'm like, come on, bro. Y'all, she don't even have five minutes yet. <laughs> you, you just trying to probably get the draws or something. You know what I'm saying? Yes, totally. Well, I mean, male comics are like when there's a new female comic in anywhere in the world. When there's a new female comic, male comics just could become all of them become Man, predators. They just prance on them. Like, yeah, because this is the only for a lot of them. This is the only community where they have any respect or sway yeah, or power. power. So they're like, a woman is now. In this community, now I look good. Now yeah. I look like a commodity. Now I can manipulate her and shit. Yeah, power <laughs> trip and everything. You know what I'm but um, I do also think that it is a bit of an overcorrection from the past, but I think that's necessary in the same way that I think it's necessary for um, like minorities and black people to be given help in. Um, like what's the word? is it affirmative action is that the, the I'm still learning about American culture <laughs> yeah, and stuff. Yeah. but is that the right yeah, thing I'm yeah, talking yeah. about I think that that has to happen to reflect how hard it was in the past yeah you, it, know, you know what I mean like yeah, like yeah. when I, even when I started it was 12 years ago and there was no female comics and everyone was like pretty horrible to me and then so now when I see female comic that's like kind of green that's getting something I'm like well it was probably hard for her to start and stick around and like the reason that there's less women in comedy than men even today is like I think the same number of men and women start but I think it's harder for women to get out of the open mic scene than it is for men because one of the things that's fun about being a new comic is like the companionship and the community and making new friends and it that is harder for women because it's like a lot of men with uh, mental illness issues and you're in like a alcohol environment yeah. and it's nighttime and they're creepy and, <laughs> and they're power tripping a lot of the time exactly. so i think women quit sooner than men a yeah. lot of the time so if they're making it out of the open mic level i think that they should be strengthened yeah that's true mm-hmm. i see what you mean by that yeah also uh i was watching you on you know on youtube and all that and i seen like you got a different type of rhythm and style and cadence. Like, how did you come up with that on stage? Like, cause I know you do a joke and you do this like little laugh, like in between your joke, and it's just adorable and it works. So I'm just wondering, how did you come up with your like your style on stage? Um, I think. Or it's, did it create itself? Yeah, I think it's just sort of how I talk. Yeah. But I, I'm sure, like everyone, it's like a mix of comics that I like. Yeah. That you kind of subconsciously copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I always thought that it was like, that I was like copying Louis C.K.'s intonation too much and that yeah. everyone was going to think it. And then I realized that people are like, oh, he talks so differently than everyone else. I was yeah. like, oh, okay, nobody knows. But in my head, I'm just doing Louis. <laughs> she said, in my head, I'm just doing Louis. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> I, I didn't think of Louis at all when I heard you. I just thought it was you. Like, that's Honestly, great. and it just made I really me like your vibe on stage too, and I feel like you. it's the way that you talk, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but some people tell me I talk differently off stage. Like they like you sound different on stage. Like I'm up there and I just turn on some voice or some shit. Well, I don't think that's true. I mean, everyone has a slightly different rhythm when you're talking on stage than yeah. when you're having a conversation. Because when you're having a conversation, you're pausing to listen to somebody yeah. else talk, and Not when you're performing. on stage, you're talking the whole time. Yeah. True. So you do sort of need to have a slightly different rhythm than than just a chit chat. Yeah. And I seen you uh you won a comedy album on the Juno Awards. That was mm. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Juno I, I was like shit, comedy that's a big big thing to just win that like that. So how was that winning that award? It was cool. It was like a woman's number one before. Oh shit. Mm-hmm. Let's and get I'm a double applause for thank that. Thank you. Whoa, yes. And I'm the youngest person to ever win. Oh as shit. Well. Let me keep that shit going. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was like it was pretty cool, but it was it was right when COVID started. So I was literally boarding my plane to go to the Juno Awards to have my red carpet moment and everything. Damn. And I got a text from someone that worked at the festival and they were like, Don't get on the plane. 
And I was like, what? That's so it's dramatic. It's COVID on the plane. Yeah, I know. I was like, is there a bomb? I love it. Like, I've never gotten a text like that. And I was like, and they're, they're like, no, it just, it just got canceled. They haven't announced it yet. Damn. But if you're, if you haven't boarded yet, just get off the plane. And so that's, that's literally, that was the moment Canada shut down. Like, that was exactly two or so years ago from now. Damn. So I really, like... It was cool, but I was just like, when I found out I won, I was just at my house. <laughs> I was just sitting there. <laughs> just so it's your house on your couch. So I won. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Because it's like, it's a pretty big award in Canada. Like, it's our Grammys, right? Damn. But it's Canada's Grammy. So it's like, <laughs> so it's not, it wasn't like live streaming or anything. Like, we wouldn't, like, nobody was like at my place with camera. Like, nobody did that. I was yeah. just at home. You know, no makeup, pajamas, like, watching on my phone. <laughs> Eating some cheese. It's Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so I remember you said something uh, in the green room. You was talking about competitions, and you like they a little funky. So it's just because I do bad in competitions. That's the so, only reason I don't. So like you it. don't really like competitions. <laughs> okay, I've kinda, do you like them? Um, I told myself I wasn't gonna do anymore. Mm-hmm. You but know? why? Why did? Because it makes you feel bad, right? A little bit. That's why it I really, don't like it. it. A little bit, and every time I feel like I got robbed, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't want to yeah. feel. I guess I'm a sore loser, but sometimes it just feels a little funky. You know? No, I am too. I'm such a sore loser in comedy <laughs> contests because I'm like, I, you know. Yeah. And it's literally happened to every good comic. Like, you do yeah. a contest and you kill. Yeah. And then you don't even place or something. Yeah. And you're like, well, all right. Yeah. So, I seen you uh, You was a finalist or you know, a semi-finalist in the... Top comics. Top comics in uh, Canada. Yeah. So, that's our big competition. Yeah. Sirius XM, top yeah. comic. The prize is 25 grand. Shit. Yeah, I mean, for a comic <laughs> in any country, like that's a that's like a life changing moment, Hell right? Yeah. So I did that contest three years in a row. Yeah, and I came runner up all three times. Runner up. Come on now, all three times. All three times as runner up, which you know, also so, nobody's ever done before, so sort of more rare than winning. <laughs> so there's no second. Place prize and well, a third place prize. You get it just for laughs taping if you get second place. Okay. And then they pay like five grand for that or something when you do it. Okay. So it is something, yeah. and uh, you know, I really without without getting that and without the few times I've done just for laughs, like I, I really don't think I would have a career because like yeah. a lot of comedy club bookers in Canada just wouldn't book me, and so truly without just for laughs, I don't think I would have a career. Damn. Well, shout out to Just for Laughs. Yeah. For helping you, shit. Happens to be all women bookers, okay. not just for laughs, too. Damn. So that's why it's important to have women around, I think. Hell yeah. When, you know, when dudes just don't like you for, you know, subconscious reasons, yeah. maybe. Like, also, it's like, it's not like I was the best comic in town. Like, I'm not delusional. Like, I didn't think I should be headlining and selling out all over the country, but. I could see that there were men that were doing the same as me, that started the same time as me, that were be were being given the opportunity to start headlining, and clubs were kind of investing in them, yeah. allowing them to yeah. have weekends where they weren't crushing so that they could get better. <laughs> Man, you are preaching right now. I ain't gonna <laughs> lie, because that happens to me out here. I be seeing, like, and like you said, female of bookers i feel like i got i, I was booked more mm -hmm. by female bookers than the male bookers at the club the male bookers would like kind of spoon feed me like a little couple gigs but the mm -hmm. females they wouldn't trip they'll be like hey let me get you in you funny we like you yeah. you know what i'm saying i like, think women should book stand up they yeah. seem like more reasonable so it, it give it a balance you know can't have all that testosterone around like <laughs> men we got big ass egos you know yeah. what i'm saying so i also that. find that it's like it's a lot of like older white men that book, at least in Canada, comedy clubs, and they seem to book acts that speak just directly to their sensibility. Like, <laughs> they don't seem to have a lot of reach for, like, what will, will speak to other demographics. Yeah. So it's just, like, a lot of other older white men that they've worked with for a long time that do the same hour every time they come to town. Yeah. But because it's about hating their wife, like, whatever. <laughs> They're like, this is comedy. They said, this is it right here. I'm caught. <laughs> Finally, yeah. the truth. Okay. So, I, uh, so it sounds like you've always done comedy. Have you had, like, a day job ever? Oh, yeah. I always had a day job. Because, like, even when I started headlining, like, 
I still my still my rate at Yuck Yucks is one hundred and twenty five dollars yeah. per show for a headlining show. Yeah. So you can't live your life on one hundred and twenty five dollars a night. Like, <laughs> Hell it's no. not like I'm working every weekend too. Like it's like that's 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 barely grocery money. <laughs> So oh, I was shit. working in kitchens. I was working at Starbucks. I worked at a smoothie place. I really liked working in the kitchen. Like I like cooking, <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, oh yeah, I told you about you my kid. Oh <laughs> man, when she quit, man, you you about telling us what happened? Why yeah. you quit? Tell um, tell us why you quit your job. <laughs> yeah, so um, I was working in this kitchen, and I really didn't mind it. I yeah. really like I like it was like a health food place. Like I was learning healthy recipes. It was yeah. great. But we had a stool. We had this <laughs> tiny little fucking stool. And when you're done your work, you get you sit on the stool. You, sit on you the just stool. have some rest. Oh my you God. have a little bit of rest. That stool feel like a pillow. That stool was a king size <laughs> bed. And then one day I go to work and the stool is gone. <laughs> the stool is gone. And I was like, I need to quit this job because why does this shitty stool that's not even have so much control over my emotions? That's fucked up. I was getting paid minimum wage to make healthy food for rich people. It was yeah. like a food prep place. Yeah. So it was just rich people coming in and getting all their meals like individually packaged for a week. And I'm there crying over a stool that yeah. I can't sit on for five minutes. If that stool was still there, you, you'd probably still be there today. I wouldn't move to America. <laughs> I would just be still sitting on my stool. I'd love it. <laughs> She'll still be working there if that stool was there. If you needed me, I'd be on that stool. God damn. Mm-hmm. Like that joke you got. If you, if if you, you find need me. me. Yeah, that's a new That's a new <laughs> That <part>. was new? <laughs> well, doing it for that long is okay. new. Okay. <laughs> I like how you is. That was risky to just do that like that, man. You was laying in that joke and it was working. I liked it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was interesting. Uh, Honestly, like um, repetition, I feel like can be so funny. <laughs> yeah, and it's so simple, but it's like it's something that I find British comics do a lot, and I don't see it as much in Canada and the states. Yeah, but like, do you ever watch like Stuart Lee or Dylan Moran? No. So they're both like UK, like the big England and Ireland guys. Yeah, and they'll both do kind of bits like that that probably only really work well in the room because it's yeah. such a it's such a energy thing, and you have you have to kind of feed off the audience, and it's it's not something you can do the same every time. And so sometimes I've seen them do bits like that in like a special, and it doesn't really translate for yeah. if you're watching at home. But it's fun to do in the room to yeah, play yeah. with. Yeah, I be trying to have a line that I bring back, but it's it don't really goes goes well. But uh, what line? Uh, I had a line. I tried to say great value. Mm. twice in my set like I have a joke where I uh, say great value and it gets a laugh then I had another joke where I tried to bring it back and try to make a little call back mm-hmm. but it didn't get the, the res- pop it didn't get the pop I wanted but mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep on playing with it see if I can make that a call back you know yeah I think like callbacks are another really interesting part of stand up because like definitely when I was newer you needed a call but like if you're doing a short set if you're doing a showcase like you, if you ended your set with a call back like Ooh, shit. crowds were pushing each <laughs> other like, over oh my God. they were running around like you can't believe they're yeah. like she said it earlier yeah, oh understand? my god this is an artist <laughs> right and i feel like i don't see it as much anymore but yeah. i do think like the callback should be called back hell <laughs> yeah <laughs> real shit bring back the call back god damn i still be trying to do it so yeah. uh, I don't know what the tricks are. I never figured out like the tricks to a callback. I think I think it's basically just like it should be the very last thing you say. Yeah. And then if it doesn't get a big laugh, you're just you're leaving anyway. So yeah, <laughs> that's that's. I don't see people try to make a callback work or end with a big laugh and it it don't work and then they keep on trying to dig in deep it's like bro now you're doing like eight minutes over your time. <laughs> <laughs> and when someone's bombing and they're over and then they're like. What else is new? And yeah, like, just leave. Yeah, just get off. Comedians, yeah. you gotta know know when to get off. You know oh, what I'm if you're bombing, go short. Yeah, like that's always better. Yeah, ain't nobody gonna kill you over that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, where is like one of your favorite places you performed at? Um, well, I really love Vancouver. Like, it's sort of where I where I found my voice. Okay, but the scene there is really good, and Vancouver doesn't really get talked about very much even in Canada because it is smaller than Toronto and it's so far from like the most populous area is like around Toronto it's in Ontario which is like 
it's like a five or six hour plane ride from Vancouver and there's not very much in between. So Toronto industry people don't often come to Vancouver and it's usually less Vancouver comics that are featured at Just for Laughs and at festivals and stuff like that. And it's really like such a strong scene. Like I've performed now in like New York and LA and and, and all over. And I think Vancouver really stacks up. Like mm. um, there's like a real culture there of writing. Yeah. So like nobody in Vancouver really has any kind of like charisma on stage. Like <laughs> it's almost viewed as like weak. Like it's like yeah. viewed as like bad comedy if you have like one act out <laughs> like <laughs> literally you could watch every good comedy show in vancouver and no, you could nobody will move everyone just stands with and the they microphone. Just, just hitting their lines they're just hitting their lines and it's like i think that's cool <laughs> 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 so that's the thing it's like it's like so focused on writing that it's bad in the way that like people that do have a stage presence are kind of viewed as like you know, just personality, or like yeah. you, you know, you, you should you should go into acting or something yeah. shady. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So I seen you. Uh, you was a writer on a on a sketch show. What is it called? Mm-hmm. Twenty five. Twenty two minutes. Twenty two minutes. Yeah, I mean that's kind of Canada's only late night SNL type show. Yeah. There's like um, you know like Weekend Update desk jokes and commercial parodies and like political sketches like it's it's like snl okay um but for elderly people basically like <laughs> the cast is like pretty old and um it's i just, thought you was i was looking for you to be in the cast but i, I was watching some i mean of them. The, so the producer that first hired me was sort of it seemed like grooming me to be on the show like yeah. he had me in like a bunch of sketches and yeah, he had I'm, me doing some correspondent work and then he was like fired or quit ah, or something, and shit. then a different producer came in who did not ah, really like me. <laughs> don't you hate when that shit happened? The yeah. person that got you in, he leaves, and mm-hmm. that's some new face. And I know, and he like left, left. Like I heard he went to like the Himalayas and ah, started damn. going on mountains. And stuff. I'm like, <laughs> you can't really, you can't get another job in, in Canada. Help me God out a little, because you try so hard to get a little bit of momentum in yeah. comedy, like. In all show business, you just, yeah. we're just trying to get a little bit of momentum, and you finally get it, and then, you know, two-year pandemic, where you, yeah. your boss gets fired, <laughs> you're like, this is always something, so yeah. just trying to get some momentum going again now. <laughs> so, what's the difference in writing stand-up and sketches? Well, I'm bad at writing sketches, I'm good at writing stand-up, <laughs> so for me, that's the difference that I noticed, but... <laughs> Well, the one thing that I heard that I thought was, like, really good advice from a good sketch writer was that stand-up, you start vague, and then you get more specific. Yeah. And then with sketches, you start really specific, and then the world grows. Okay. So it's just opposite direction for that, which was, like, kind of the only piece of sketch writing advice that I really understood. Damn. (laughs) But, yeah, I'm really bad at sketch. I'm not, like... Because I can only really write from my own voice. I'm not good at writing characters and yeah. worlds and conflicts that are didn't happen to me that day. <laughs> and just as stand-ups, like, we're so spoiled because, like, we say whatever we want in yeah. our own voice from our perspective. Yeah. Like, and with sketches, like, there's so many more moving parts. Yeah, okay. Do you like sketches? Do you write sketch comedy? No, uh, sometimes when I'm joking with people, I feel myself joking in the sketch way like how you know how they have tags and stuff like, yeah or i have a thought i'm like damn but i don't know how to write it so i always wondered i want to ask you like mm-hmm. how do you even write it if i want to sit down and think of a sketch like how would i go at it well they gave us one like rubric like tool thing sort of which was like i think it was more to make it do well online i don't know if that's i don't know if it's like a rule for all sketch writing yeah but in the first, like, five seconds, there should be a dangle. That's what they call it. A dangle. Which is basically just, like, you're dangling the premise of the sketch. Like, you have to show that there's, like, a conflict or a weird character or just the premise, basically. Like, you have a first, have immediately established that something weird or funny is going on. Yeah. And then some jokes about that. And then there should be a twist. Kind of like in stand-up, but also it's, like more consistent in sketch there should be some kind of twist and then a punchline on the twist basically and that's like a vague skeleton for a sketch okay 
we learning. She teaching us, man. I, don't know. I never got the hang. I never got the hang of sketchwriting, honestly. Okay. Well, I'm gonna definitely try to figure it out, man. Uh, <laughs> so I also seen that you have a boyfriend mm-hmm. that does comedy. Yeah. What is that like having a boyfriend? Because I always thought it'd be weird dating a comedian. Because I feel like that's well, the- you hate female comics so much. So <laughs> oh, when did I say I, I hate female comics? <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, boo and me? Boo and me? Oh, you're booing him. Okay, good. Boo yeah. me for not liking me. I love female comedians. Um, I mean, I like, I kind of, I've like. kind of only ever dated comics. Like, I dated one battle rapper. Um, but that's just like a comedian. Like, yeah, that's kind of like in, comedy. In budget, in vibe. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah, definitely in budget. Shit. Yeah, yeah they're, making, they're pulling the same kind of funds as the comic. Hell yeah. Um, but... I would like it, like, cause I'm so obsessed with com- like stand-up comedy is really who I am and yeah. what, like my passion, and so I need to be with somebody that gets it. Gets you know? it, yeah. And people, the main question, I kind of want to turn this into a joke if I can figure it out, but like people always ask me um, if there's like a joke he does on stage about me that I don't like, and I don't. There's not, but like. There's a lot of things just in life that he does that I don't like. <laughs> like, he can say whatever he wants on stage. Yeah. But, like, if you're bothering me just in our home, yeah. that's worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, y'all don't ever be like, oh, I'm, I'm funnier than you or some shit like that? Or no, y'all... I mean, I think he's funnier than me. And I think he thinks I'm funny, at least. Yeah. So, <laughs> I like it. Like, okay. yeah, and we help each other and... It's just a good relationship. Like, I've had horrible relationships with comics as well. Yeah. And so, you know, after those ones, everyone's always like, well, you know, we told you not to date comics. Yeah, and I was like, comics. Oh, yeah. And I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't. But then, you know, I found the right person for me. And it's like totally different. Oh, yeah. So, how long have y'all been uh, together? Um, I think like five years. Okay. Yeah. It's been a really long time. We met at Just for Laughs. Damn. It was both of our first year there. Is he's Canadian? Yeah, he's Canadian okay. too. Okay, so he's Canadian, and y'all never ran into each other to just laughs. No, so he was from Hamilton, which is like near Toronto, and I'm, you know. Yeah, you don't fool with Toronto. You know, you know how I feel <laughs> he's about too Toronto. Close to Toronto. So. Yeah, he's you know going to Raptors games, so I'm like yeah. not interested. <laughs> but oh. yeah, I I was also like we were both. Um, we were both working in comedy, but we were both relatively new, like only a couple years in. So that was the first time that we crossed paths and just started dating right away. That's cool. Mm. Okay. So uh, do you see yourself maybe getting in movies or something or sitcoms or are you just trying to mm. stay in stand-up? Like, like, obviously, I'd love to. Like, it just seems like so such easy money yeah. but maybe i'm underestimating <laughs> like i also like i go on so many auditions and i don't book anything so there's obviously something harder than than what i'm seeing okay that i'm not picking up on but i've recently started getting like callbacks and stuff so that's like a lot better because yeah. i'm so used to stand up where you get that immediate the crowd Response. tells you if something's funny or not yeah and then with acting, especially with like self tapes at home, you, know, you get no feedback. You just <laughs> never hear back, and yeah. you're like, "Am I am I being insane on camera? <laughs> like, what am I doing?" Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, I haven't I haven't gotten any acting stuff, but I'm still new. Like I feel like casting agents are like industry people in stand up. Like you know, you meet someone a few times, and they see you getting better, or they like your vibe, and eventually. Those people add up and somebody yeah. finds you something. So I'm trying not to get too discouraged by that and just to treat it like like being a new comic. Like I'm a new actor. Okay. And so I haven't figured everything out yet. Like I can see that I've gotten better too, especially because I have self-tapes. Like I can watch the first one I did and see, yeah. could see how nervous I was or whatever. And so when you get more, more comfortable, then you can start making choices and stuff. Like yeah. I never understood... What that meant because people always talk about like choices make a, make a choice actors actor. make but, what's your goal yeah it's like, <laughs> i never really understood even what that meant yeah. but now that i'm a bit more comfortable doing it I, I do understand that it's like saying something in a different way than yeah. than either it was written or saying it in a different way than other people are saying it like yeah. that's all it really is it's yeah, just yeah. making something more your own okay mm-hmm. so uh you do you want to do acting stuff too? Hell yeah, I wouldn't mind it. Yeah. Shit, <laughs> I've uh, I've took training before in acting. Okay. So uh, 
I feel like it helped me on stage with my stage presence and mm-hmm. my voice and all that. So I feel like acting is something I want to get into. But right now I'm just trying to master this comedy and uh, this podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, and maybe I can get into some acting. I just feel like I need to create my own shit. Totally. That's you know totally saying? the move. Yeah. Create my own shit. That way I ain't got to be submitting and taking all these no's from these people. I'm going to create my own movie, That's, that's like what it's all about. Totally. Like... Like everybody, there's a quote from J Lo yeah. that's basically like, the hardest working people are the ones that get success, but you don't see the hard work, you just see the success. Yeah. And, you know, that's coming from J Lo. Like, did she lie to us? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming from J Lo, man. J Lo yeah. would not lie. J Lo cannot tell a lie. She's the like Abraham Lincoln in Living Color. Is that what she's from? I don't know. Started from in Living Color. Mm-hmm. Now she's a philanthropist. She yeah, is. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I see you bring up Louis C.K. a lot. Is that one of your favorite comedians? I was going to ask you, like, who's mm-hmm. your favorite comedian? Or? Is it ever? I love is like canceled or dead so like I love Louis I love Chappelle Patrice O'Neal was my favorite yeah any relation no oh, no <laughs> that's my O'Neal is my middle name oh okay yeah, got it so you're trying to keep it separate yeah. for comedy I, I yeah. just just feel like O'Neal just got more seasoning to it mm-hmm. there's O'Neal yeah, yeah. Evans. It's a, well, it's a comedy. It's almost like a comedy heritage name from yeah. Patrice. Hell yeah. Yeah. And shout out to Patrice, man. R.I.P. Legend. But man. that's like that's what comedy is. Like Hell his yeah. his special elephant in the room. Man. To me, that's the best special of all time. The only reason he's not like the first person I name is because I think that's his only special. Yeah. And so you know, it, it, which is just such a bummer. Like everything that happens in the world, I wonder what his Stand up what, take would be on it because we can't even say fathom. That. We can't even fathom what it would be. What it would be. I always. I wonder what he'll say about COVID. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a few people that I always want. I wonder. I don't know if you know Pimp C. He's a rapper from Houston Legend. I always wonder what Pimp C will say. Imagine about if this. I was like, yeah, of course. I know. <laughs> Hell yeah, I know Pimp C. <laughs> Duh. That would be crazy. <laughs> Who doesn't like? know Pimp C? <laughs> well, R.I.P. Pimp C. But I always wonder what he would say about mm-hmm. COVID or Trump or all yeah. this stuff that's going on. So I feel that way about Eminem too. Like I feel like Eminem. Um, I often agree with his opinions on stuff. Yeah. And, you know, he hated Trump, and I saw that. And then it just feels great, because, like, he didn't have to hate Trump. Like, he, his fans are the demographic that like Trump, yeah. probably. So for him to come out against him was sick. Like, yeah. that's cool. He's probably lost a lot of fans from that. Yeah. Eminem. I wonder what his goal was mm-hmm. behind that, <laughs> you know, hating <laughs> Trump. Uh, so you say you want to get into movies taking a lot of no's right now taking a lot of no's yeah (laughs) (laughs) well what what are your who are your favorite comics my favorite comics uh i've been watching michael che (gasps) lately i love michael che his his first netflix special also for me is like one of the top ones yeah i've been watching him uh but the people that inspired me to do comedy was i'll say martin lawrence and uh Mm -hmm. chris tucker yeah you know but I love Chappelle as far as stand up and uh, before he started doing his like rally yeah. rallies. <laughs> yeah, I, I like skinny Chappelle. You know what I'm saying? <gasps> that's so funny. Can I say, say that to people? Because you can say that. That's, I'll credit you. That's like that's exactly how I feel. I love skinny it's, Chappelle yeah. when he's all teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Skinny Chappelle, man. Uh, With, like, how, how young is 15, really? And, like, yeah. his iconic bits from, Hell like, yeah. his DC special. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. He has some classic shit. Chappelle right show, there. too. is incredible. Hell yeah. Now he's being so weird. Like, I try to always give him the benefit of the doubt because it's clear that Hollywood did something to him right yeah. and i'm obsessed with the mystery of like what did they do and you know i mean in, in his like batch of specials that he put out when yeah. he re-emerged yeah. he ended that one that comedy club one with with that big analogy from that book about the pimp and the how he like trapped the you know bottom bit yeah. that? <laughs> and how the analogy you know it's clear that he is saying that he was like framed into doing something so that the industry could manipulate him yeah and then so he just left but i'm really curious as to what it could be and so from all that and from 
get becoming so famous and these bad things happening like I'm sure he's got a lot of trauma and so I do try to always give him like the benefit of the doubt the benefit of the doubt but like some like lately he's just really testing my patience <laughs> like he was like what, what, what has he done I, ain't, I must have been missed I'm well, asleep yeah. or something yeah so one of the, and, and this is another thing it's like I also don't I know that he's not like a uh, an industry darling anymore like I know now the media everyone loves writing articles about how yeah. bad he is so I try not to just read the headlines and like I, I know that there's like a there's an angle on him is yeah, that he's bad I know that the narrative for him is that he's bad yeah so I try to I always try to so they're trying to make him a villain they're trying to make him a villain but sometimes he just does villainous things <laughs> like like they were trying to build like a low income housing thing near his neighborhood yeah. and he was the one that made it impossible to do like he was the one that wow. was like like rallying against his uh, like senator like the city council person to get his job and then it's not and then they didn't make Damn. it and it's like it's hard for me to be like okay well what is he thinking <laughs> <laughs> yeah because like i love him and i i understand that there's this like you know people want to villainize him but but it's like you don't have to feed into like you don't have to become a villain just because yeah. that's how people view you but me like i've never been on that level of you know, eyes on you and stuff. Like, yeah. I don't know how I would handle the pressure. Like, maybe it just it's. I think. I mean, I've always felt like once you once you get a certain level of rich, you you forget what it's like to be poor. You forget what it's <laughs> like to for everybody else. Yeah. And it just creates such a distance. Yeah. And I think I think money might have just got to him. Yeah. Damn. Like I just miss Skinny Chappelle. That's all. Yeah, it's so, it's I just so miss true. Skinny Chappelle, man. He was man. so pure. Yes, man. I don't know what happened, but I mean, I watch him. I be like uh, Chappelle. Everybody mm. be on the movement, but I be like, damn, I miss Skinny Chappelle, though. It's just gotta be money, I think. Yeah. Because like, when Trump got elected, I was like very upset because I mean, firstly, it's just the opposite sort of where I sit politically, but also it seemed like he was really creating a lot of fear mongering and a lot of like just really separating the country and, and separating the United States from the rest of the world. Like it just felt very negative. Yeah. And I was trying to understand why Americans voted for him because I, <laughs> in my head I'm really villainizing like Trump supporters and I don't yeah. wanna like I don't wanna like, hate a group of people, but for me it just felt so gross. <laughs> and so I was like looking into it and basically people that tend to vote Republican or for Trump or whatever, um, it's it's basically everybody is the same. Everybody wants to protect the people that they see every day. So if you live in a big city, if you live in an apartment building, if you take public transit, yeah. you're more likely to be more progressive because you're around all different sorts of people of different ages and races and genders and whatever. Yeah. But if you're living in like a more rural area, if you're living on a farm. You know, you're basically only seeing your family and the few families that are, that live on your street, right? Yeah. And when you're really rich, you have that same thing as the rural people. Like, you have the people in your house, and then you have, like, your business buddies or whatever. Yeah. But you're not forced to be around people that you don't know as much. And so, it's, that, it's just the same mentality across the board. It's like, you want to protect the people that you see all the time. Yeah. And so, you know, that softened it a little for me. I don't really know where my point is where I'm going with this, but <laughs> it softened it a little. It's still frustrating, but, like, that was just... I, I thought that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you... Outside of comedy, what else do you like to do? Mm. Like shopping, buying shoes that you wear one time? Yeah, I have a big shopping addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I went to fashion school. Okay. I dropped out, but like I love fashion, I love clothes. Yeah. Um, I just started a Depop store, which is like online, like thr is, thrifted you, clothes and, okay. and stuff. It's kind of a Gen Z thing. Like I'm the oldest person on Depop. <laughs> Depop? Yeah. It's I've like, never heard of it. It's like Etsy or it's just like an online, mostly secondhand clothing store. Okay. And, yeah, it's just like, you know, I'm doing stand-up full-time, and so my, my whole days are free. Yeah. So it's a good excuse to go shopping. And I'm <laughs> going to sell it. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, you like to shop. and uh, you I like to go hiking. I'm near hiking. a nice hike in L.A. Um, I like movies, you know so boring like I'm like what else do I do um I have a podcast too yeah yeah 
But yeah, I just like definitely need a hobby. I need an interest. Yeah. This is a wake up call for me. (laughs) So, uh. I haven't been asked this since I was like dating six years ago. (laughs) I had probably better answers. Yeah. What do you like to do? It's like interesting things. Yeah. So, uh, you, I was going to ask you, what do you think about merch? You don't want to like have your own type of merch or something? Yeah. I mean, I've never done it. I haven't done it before. I was trying to like, I don't know if I was telling you or I was telling Linda that. I only just learned how to pack light. Like, my whole stand-up career, I've always had to check a bag at the airport because I have so much stuff with me. And I've now narrowed it down to, you saw my bag that I brought. (laughs) It's a carry-on size. I have outfits for the weekend and, like, my makeup and hair stuff. Um, But that bag is, like, full. Yeah. And so I don't really have room for merch yet. Once I learn how to cut that down... And there's room to travel with merch, then then I'll start doing merch. Okay. It's just a practical issue. Okay. So what are you thinking with shirts or I'm gonna do like um face cloths that face say cloths. or like um like you know what I mean? Like a, a cloth that says like come on my shoulders. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's from a joke. Yeah, it's clever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering. And that's easy to travel with, too. It's small. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I'll be thinking, too. Like, outside of shirts, what can I get that's small, that's not that expensive, mm-hmm. that I can travel with, you know? Uh, yeah. There, I know some people that have that will sell, like, a USB with, like, their old album and for mm. some sketches or some writing or, like, stuff like that on it because that's Damn. really small. And you can get some, like, cool customized ones that look that are, like, the size of, like, a credit card. But have like a USB flip out, and that looks cool. <laughs> and then, like minimum, like everyone needs a USB for some reason yeah. in their life. So if you make it editable, then you're like, I'm just selling USB. I'm like, you know, yeah. I'm like Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little ghetto Best Buy yeah. here. <laughs> Damn. Okay. So, uh, do you have any? Well, I doubt you do. Are you into pets or anything like that? No. How did you know that I'm not? <laughs> I was just asking, wondering, like... That's have, so funny. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't, like, grow up with pets. Yeah. So, like, I do kind of want, like, a little dog. Like, since I've been in L.A., everyone has a everyone little dog. Everyone has a dog. You I gotta kinda, get I would hang out with a little dog, but... Yeah, I can but see you with a little dog. Yeah, I kind of want a wiener dog. <laughs> carrying around like that. I would love him. Oh, as a kid, I wanted a wiener dog, too. They're so funny. Lie. They're cute. Just, do you have pets? No. I don't. Um, okay, but, so it wasn't a judgment when no, you asked no. me. <laughs> I don't. Have, I had one though. I had a dog named mm-hmm. Domino. A little Domino. Poodle. The, a poodle. Yeah. And that was your dog. It was my dog as a wow. kid. It was my little childhood dog. That's cute. Yeah. But uh, not now. You know, I, I don't have time to take care of them. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, and, and, traveling. and that's what's kind of good about a little dog, though, is you can take them on the road. Like, I was just opening for a Fortune Feimster, mm-hmm. and her and her wife have a little dog that they travel around with. And I was asking how much harder it is, because they have, like, a little Pomeranian, like, small, like a wiener dog. Yeah. And I was trying to... <laughs> and I was, just, I was just trying to ask, like, what basically how much harder it is really to be on the road with a dog. Yeah. And they said that it's good to get a, a rescue dog that's a little bit older because you can see their personality right away. So mm. if they're, like, a really anxious animal, you shouldn't... It's not right for you because you need someone yeah. that's, like, chill on a plane. Yeah, yeah. And they said that it's actually not that much harder. It's just more expensive because if you're bringing a dog on a plane, it's, like, extra 100 bucks. If you're bringing a dog into a hotel, it's like extra hundred bucks, sometimes two hundred. So it's more of a price thing than yeah. an actual inconvenience. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing too. I ain't trying to spend all that extra money. No, I, I'm smart. Yeah, <laughs> I can't afford yeah, like, it. I'm like, <laughs> then I start looking at it like it's just a dog. You I know. know. Three like, hundred dollars? No. Mm-mm. No, not for yeah, me. No. So, um, what's what's next for you? What you got coming up? Um, well, I'm just kind of trying to get a job. Like, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to get somebody to hire me. Uh, I have a, a lot of stand-up stuff coming yeah. up. Like, basically, till the summer, I have almost nonstop Damn. work. Busy. Yeah, super busy. Like, my agent, my booking agent did really push me hard. I think I made it clear that I was like, if I don't make money, I have to go back to Canada. And he's yeah. like, oh, I'll find something. Okay. But I'm really trying to get a writing job or an acting job because it's like so much more money than stand-up. Okay. And I'm always going to do stand-up. I just like, I have my days free. Like, I should, I can make money during the day too, yeah. I think. Hell yeah. So, yeah, I'm working on like writing samples and I'm doing... 
acting stuff and I'm, you know, I'm doing my podcast. Like I got a lot of, I'm doing my Depop. I got a lot of balls yeah. in the air. <laughs> my Depop. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, check out her Depop, <laughs> man. Wait, please. I, every time I do a podcast, they're like, do you want to plug your podcast, your album? I'm like, check out my Depop. Depop. <laughs> I'm trying to hawk these clothes. <laughs> Damn, that is what's up. Yeah, okay. it's, in my, it's literally in my Instagram bio, my Depop shop. So I'm going to check it out I, yeah, just I'm, to see if it's there. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> I'm adding men's stuff, too, because I don't discriminate when I shop. Yeah. I'll buy anything. <laughs> okay, Depop. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of that. What's next for you? What's next for me? Uh, I have a private gig. Uh, I'm doing some little birthday. Uh, I think I'm gonna be at the Addison Improv in a few weeks. That's great. Got a lot of private little stuff going on. Private meaning what? Like a private? Like it's like a corporate? Uh, have you heard of Gig Salad? No. Yeah, it's this. I booked a couple gigs. It's just people looking for acts on Gig Salad. Like I'm doing something for some teachers. They doing some uh, fundraiser and it's I, it's private. For, it's only for the teachers and I'm doing. And they just some, want to come gig yeah, salad. Interesting. Gig salad. Okay. You know, so I get a lot of gigs from gig salad. Mm. You know, so gig salad. That's funnier than Depop. Funnier <laughs> than Depop. Check out and my gig saying, salad. You're saying gig salad like that's not the funniest name I, for I a company. Mean, <laughs> it's normal as hell. I'm surprised you never heard of gig salad. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> gig salad, man. Like. Check it out. They book all type of shit. Music on there, everything. Okay. But you I'll don't need it. it. You uh No, I do need it. I have no money. Like the <laughs> thing is I like I'm I it costs money. I'm in so much debt from moving here that yeah. I have no money still, even though I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> so please check out her deep pop. She's check, trying to buy get some up. clothes from Buy me, some please. clothes. She's trying to get her money up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh I want to ask you what makes you a comedian what 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 just inside of you just like man i am a damn comedian Mm -hmm. this is me Mm -hmm. like what is that i think i have an answer i think that it's when something bad happens to you you're excited because it's like could be a bit yeah i think that's really when you know you're a comic damn is like something heartbreaking will happen or really inconvenient or someone will be so mean to you or something like that and then you're like that's funny how mean they just were to me (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think that's really what it is because it's really like i think that's why i love stand-up is because anytime anything bad happens to you you're like well i'm not leaving empty-handed i'm leaving with a story yeah yeah Mm -hmm. that is what's up man i think that's uh we're going to leave out on that, man. Um, we here with Sophie Buttle. I appreciate you coming through, man. Oh, my God. Thank you for Thank having you me. you for coming to the this nucleus. So fun. I felt like you were so shy all weekend. I didn't know if you wanted to be friends. I'm oh, so no, happy. no, no. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to intrude. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But you were hella cool, hella sweet. You too. And I appreciate you having me, man. Make sure y'all follow her. What's your... uh Bungie Pop. So- oh, <laughs> Soap Buds on Instagram. Soap Buds. Link in bio for my Depop. Check out her Depop, man. Soap Buds on Instagram. <laughs> Dez O'Neill Comedy. It's the Nucleus, baby. We out. Thank you. Ooh, that was so fun. I enjoyed it. I think that was You're a good. great episode. Hell yeah, you were, you were good. I mean, I didn't hear your other episode yet. <laughs> it might be the worst.